Hey guys, hey book buddies, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessie and I don't know if this is gonna be like a sipper video, like a TBR, or if I'm just gonna wallop it into my reading vlog, but we'll see. So this basically is the TBR of why I'm reading for the month of October, but I probably won't get to all these books, but this is just like a very ambitious TBR. But what I'm currently reading right now is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. Her and her brother go back to their childhood home because their father just passed away and they're like clearing out the house, putting up on the market for sale. But while they're there doing that, she realizes her dad's neighbor. And like she finds the neighbor like kind of odd and off. And she's like, is he a serial killer? But he's also kind of cute. But she listens to a lot of true crime podcasts and she is, I think she's writing like a thesis book or like, I'm not really sure. I'm still reading this. I'm only on like 50 pages in, which I'm explaining this horribly. And I have seen so many horrible reviews on this book and I'm like really loving it so far. So I'm just like kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop and be like, oh, that's why people don't like this book. Because I heard like a lot of people have DNF this book or like they trudge to get through this book. And so like, it's so bland, it's so boring. I'm just like, I'm really enticed by this book. Is this like gonna be another Unpopular Opinions book? I'm loving it so far. There's not really any particular order I am reading these books besides kind of the next two books I'm showing y'all because I do wanna read these three books first and then I don't care what I read among this pile. Killers of a Certain Age by Diana Rayburn. This is one of the other thrillers I recently just got and that is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the second book in the girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, to the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. The Maidens by Alex Michael Deese. Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimono. Next, we'll do this one and leave off with the steamy one. <laughs> A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins, Hooked by Emily McIntyre. So those are all the books that I am planning on reading or wanting to at least get to in this month of October. And it'll probably translate over to November reading, honestly. I for sure want to read these three books in the month of October at least. Boobles, say hi. Okay. Does that do anything? No? Sorry about the lighting. Page 202, chapter 17 of Love in the Time of Serial Killers. And as you can tell, can you even tell? I've, I started annotating it. Can y'all see that? <laughs> I didn't start doing it until like 100 pages and like I literally started on page 113. The tabs are like either it made me laugh or I related to the main character, Phoebe. Or like it got a little like, not steamy, but like a little flirty between Sam and Phoebe. Yeah, I feel like there's, I was having a lot more than what it shows, but I love this book. I'm in love. It's hilarious. I don't know if you would call this a slow burn since we're at 202 and we just had like a little steamy scene. But I love the main character. I love how she talks. Her dialogue with everyone she interacts around her. The character Phoebe, she is me and I am she. We had the same sense of humor and the way we talk. And I guess that's also why I was having a lot I'm like, I would say that, I would feel like that, I would comment that, or whatever. And I just, oh, I love this book so much, and I hope it doesn't let me down <laughs> when I read the rest and finish this book. 
because I still went back to the Goodreads reviews and they're like not the greatest. I'm like, am I just, am I an unpopular opinion? Because they don't really care for the character and like, they think that she's dry sense of humor or like nothing's really happening but I'm like I'm living for it and I'm loving this book I don't know so I finished this book and I loved it but it wasn't a five star let's talk about it she was a little rude here and there towards like people but she just didn't know what she wanted and she was afraid because it was the unknown. My witty banter, my dry humor is the same as hers because I love true crime. I know about serial killers and like fun facts and different ones, but not to the extent of Phoebe's. But when I was probably halfway to reading it, I didn't realize this is a grumpy sunshine book. And it's not like, I don't even think it's like advertised as a grumpy sunshine book. And it's not like forced in your face like some are typically. And I liked that. Phoebe and Sam are totally different people. They're polar opposites, and I love that. Even though they are pol polar opposites, Sam understood her. He got her. He, like, threw his wit back. He threw his dry sense of humor back at her. And, like, since they're polar opposites, you would think that people would, like, be like, oh, you're weird. But no, he loved her for that. He thrived in it he just he accepted her quirks and i loved that and vice versa phoebe wasn't sure because of how like he's a khaki wearing dude and she's like i don't know about him i don't know if he can handle my weirdness or my quirks or like i'm so different or whatever you know stereotyp stereo stereotypical but she realizes the more she gets to know him wait he's not bad after all and i just feel like she's got like a bad taste in her mouth from previous experiences experiences in her life of polar opposite people that she's been with but then meeting Sam I feel like <clears throat> they were meant for each other but also this book doesn't start off with romance we are start off with the thrill aspect of is he a serial killer and I do wish we were like in that bubble of the is he a serial killer a little bit more because once that thrill end they're flirty romance started and that was like a hundred pages in so it's like it's not even is it like a slow burn i don't know just don't expect there to be romance at the beginning of the book like at first 100 pages and a half don't expect romance expect the thrill of thinking that he's a serial killer or is he a serial killer we don't know so i'm trying not to give spoilers away this book has some steamy scenes like detailed steamy scenes when they're doing it and I think it was written well, it was done well, and it was it's not faded about black at all. Those steamy sex scenes were written well. I love Alicia Thompson's writing. I love her writing, I love her dialogue, I love her characters. We get so much character development with not just Phoebe, like her character development is huge, but character development with like Sam, her brother, and her brother's girlfriend. We learn so much and we like grow with them and I related to them so much. I was like in this book, my feelings were intertwined with this book and story. I loved it. The structure I think was good too, but I just kind of wish, like I said, that we were in the thrill bubble a little bit longer or like maybe there's like a twist in the story to where it's like, if it's not Sam, then who is it that's doing these things, you know? Because we still get serial killer Phoebe mind throughout the whole book because that's what she is doing as her job, her dissertation. And she's trying to like get to get, get her shit together to present, a, a, I can't pronounce the word, but it's for her to, I think, become a teacher and teach true crime. But I wish we still had a little bit more of a thrill aspect throughout the book. Maybe that's an entirely different book that I need to read and find, but I loved it. The ending was kind of cheesy, not overly cheesy, but it was cute and, <sighs> I loved this book. I loved it. And I gave it a four out of five stars. And now I'm on to reading. <laughs> they both have the word killer in the title. <laughs> Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayburn. And this is Golden Girls meets Kill Bill. Cause like four of like trained assassins are retiring, but the institution that their job people, the board is what they're called, are saying like, well, you can't, we have to kill you now. 
you can't retire and be a normal life since you are trained assassins. So it's either you get killed by the board or you have to kill the board to survive. And I'm here for it. And it's a fairly short book. This book is 348 pages. So it's kind of like a little bit longer than this book. But I'm starting this book today and I'm excited about it. So it's been like maybe a week since the last clip and I'm on chapter 7, page 69 of Killers of a Certain Age. I'm in a reading slump. <laughs> Great. But usually when I force myself to vlog and read, I get through my reading slump break out of it and continue reading and finishing a book so that's what I'm doing even though I started this reading vlog uh, yeah <laughs> also last week was really busy with appointments for my mental health so that's also why i wasn't really reading last week because i was busy but i'm so excited you guys will already be seeing this video before this video it's today tuesday already sunday i went to the veronica roth book talk and signing event for poster girl it was so good i loved it i got to meet veronica she is so nice she signed my Divergent series, Carve the Mark, and Poster Girl. So I need to kick my booty into gear and read this book because it's not even that big of a book. 350 pages. And I am excited to read this. It's just, I put the book down when it's kind of like slow and nothing really happens. Worst time ever to put a book down, I know. But that's just what I do. So I'm gonna read this now. So I just got to chapter 11, page 103, and everything has happened so far. And the timelines go back and forth between chapters. It goes from when they were in the academy, I think, when they were first starting off, and then to present where they're retiring, but they're starting to be killed off, they find out. When it goes back to the past, it's like a narrator. But when it goes back to the present, it's one of the girls talking. So I don't know which I like better when it's alternating chapters, but it's okay so far. That being said, when it's the past and it's the narrator, it's like a detached feeling I have towards the characters where I don't care for them, but when it's the present and it's one of the girls of the four girl group talking, I feel for the characters more and there's more character development. If that makes sense. Writing wise, it is detailed, but also like gets to the point and like moves on quickly. Kind of like it and I kind of don't. I don't know. I'm still trying to like figure out if I like the writing of this book or not. The dialogue is good so far, but it either like I get confused on which of the girls are talking or it doesn't specify because there's four girls in the assassin group and it gets confusing with who's talking and I have to like look back to try to figure it out so that's kind of annoying but so far so good and it's like very like it's kind of making me like chuckle a little bit with how they talk between all um, themselves and it's kind of giving me like charlie's angels vibes but that's where i am i am enjoying this book so far even though it's taking me a little bit longer to read 100 pages because 
I like to try to read 100 day, 100 days, wow. I try to read 100 pages per day. And for some reason, this feels like it's taking a, a little bit longer to just read a couple pages. Okay, so I just finished filming a video and was putting books away, but... Sticker residue, come on! Ugh. At least make them like easy peel away. Goodwill, do better. Bad lighting, but it is what it is. I read pages last night. <laughs> I'm at 168 pages and I think like I'm almost at the end of chapter 16 and it is giving me you know like the oceans movies it's giving me I think it's oceans 8 where it's with Sandra Bullock and Rihanna and Mindy Kaling it's giving me that kind of vibe of the four girls because like they end up at a safe house and like I'm just getting flashbacks of the safe house or the place that they are at in Ocean's 8. I think it's Ocean's 8. I could be totally wrong. But it's giving me that vibes. And then like them trying to figure out what they did wrong or why they're being killed off by the museum. We still keep going back between two timelines and training with the museum and then present tense with them trying to figure out why there's a hit out on them and trying to defuse the hit or like try to reason with the museum. So that's where I got to. <laughs> I do like it. But I got lunch. I'm eating a late lunch. It's like 2.15 and I got a poke bowl and it's called a smoothie but it's just like blended strawberries and ice with like I like to call them fake caviar. It's obviously not caviar. Big bubbles. They're like flavored. That's at the bottom. I don't know what they're called. Popping bubbles? I think that's what it was on the menu. It's so good. But I'm like, is, is that a smoothie with a milk? Or is that a milkshake? I think that's actually a milkshake. So this is a smoothie. <laughs> I don't know what I'm... My hands all over the place. This is so good. Then I got this for lunch. It's mixed greens with like salmon, tuna avocado, pineapple, edamame, ginger. Oh, there's red onions. I should have said no to red onions. Mandarin, oranges, onion crunch. Yeah. I'm gonna eat this and then I'm gonna read more of my book. This dang light right here. <laughs> Driving me crazy. Okay, I know I'm red in the face, but that's just my natural face. I didn't really put any makeup on besides mascara. But I'm house sitting slash dog sitting a friend's house with my sister. And I'm doing quick runs for drinks and Starbucks. And I am obsessed with this smoothie drink thing. But now I need to do a Starbucks order. But I am 248 pages through in chapter 28 of killers at a certain age and it's okay i was expecting it to be more action-packed it's kind of like lagging it, it it's slow when they're in between kills <laughs> that sounds really weird to say i'm really not liking this lighting hold on guys i'm so sorry but when we're in present tense chapters i figured out now is from billy's point of view she's the one that's talking because i couldn't really figure it out until now it's okay so far it's like a three star read not my favorite by any means i'm gonna go do a starbucks run and then i'm gonna go to the house that i'm dog sitting slash house sitting and read some more So I was just editing this reading vlog and I realized I didn't like how the ending part of this video came out, so here we are. But I finished Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayburn a couple weeks ago. So I didn't love the book, but I liked it. I thought it was okay. I thought it was kind of underwhelming of a book. We do have two different timelines, goes back and forth between different chapters from past to present and in the past we see them being made as a group and then we see them training and then 
it goes to the present where they are retiring. And everything happens at the very beginning of the book where they find out they're trying to be killed off. And the past is narrated. The present is Billy talking. Like I said throughout the video, it kind of took me a while to realize who was the main one talking in the present tense chapters. And again, like I said, I wish this book was more action-packed than it was. In Between Kills, it was kind of a lull. It was kind of boring, kind of dragged for me. When it was In Between Kills, it would go back to the past. It would, it would be like focused on a specific person of the museum board that they're trying to kill. And we get the backstory on the person. So I did like that we get to have a backstory of each person of the board. It's like a cat and mouse chase of like the board trying to kill the girls and the girls trying to like kill a board, but also understand what is going on, why they're being targeted, try to defuse the issue or they have to kill them. So I like that we get to know each character backstory and why. But that being said, when it is the past and the backstory on the individual people of the board, it dragged. It dragged for me a lot to where I know you should not put the book down when it's a part that's boring or in a lull, but that's what I do. That's my toxic trait while well, I read. <laughs> I do like the writing of this book. It's very like straightforward, descriptive, but not overwhelming. The dialogue, I liked it in the present tense more than past tense. In the structure, I understand the structure. I just don't really care for the past chapters. I wish it was more like, what is that? I, I don't know the word I'm trying to think of. I wish it was more like to the point. That's what I'm trying to say, to the point and not like a fluffy and detail thing. The characters, I liked. Character development was good, but also like I said, I feel like I repeat myself so much and it annoys me while I was editing, so I know it annoys y'all. But this gave me Ocean's 8 vibes for sure. And I feel like it was also in the age range of the two main girls of Ocean's 8. So I went with that mentally pictured while reading this instead of Golden Girls, because I felt like that was more accurate and age-wise. There's a lot of twists and turns in this book, and I do like the outcome of everything. I was pleased with that but my journey of reading this book, it was okay. Not my favorite book at all, but I did like it. And I gave it a three out of five stars. And that is my thoughts and feelings on this book. So this is the ending of this reading vlog. I hope you guys liked it. But like this video if you want more reading vlogs by me, or just like, subscribe if you want more videos by me in general, and I'll see you guys later. Bye guys. Well, I'm really slow and lagging on that.